Shalom, family. Let's pray. Our Father and our Yah, we come to you today giving you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, to be in the land of the dying, living for your glory. Hallelujah. We thank you and praise you, Father, that you open our eyes that we may see. Hallelujah. And open our ears that we may hear. We thank you for more revelation and insight into your word, Father, this day in the mighty name of Yahusha. We thank you for showing us when your day starts so we can walk in the light of your word. In Yahusha's name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you all for joining us today. Hallelujah. We believe that this second lesson, hallelujah, on Yah's calendar, hallelujah, will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Remember to like, share, and to subscribe. And don't forget to click the all for the notifications so you will not miss any information. I mean, hallelujah. If you have not listened to the lesson on whose calendar are you following, go back and listen to that lesson first. Every lesson in this series builds on the previous lessons. In the first lesson, references are listed in the description box below to help you complete your research so that you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. I mean, I am joining with you today, sharing what Yah gave me. My job is to deliver the mail. That's it, just to deliver the mail. What you do with the mail is between you and Yah. I mean, feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. Hallelujah. We're going to start with the Jubilees 2 and 9. And remember that Jubilees was written by Moses. And it reads, And Yah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days. And that is as far as we're going to go today in Jubilees chapter 2, verse 9, that Yah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days. Hallelujah. You can read the rest on your own. There is a link to the book of Jubilees in the description box below. Now let's look at Bereshit, Genesis Chapter 1, verse 3. And the reason we're looking at this is because Bereshit, Genesis 1, verse 3, confirms the statement in Jubilees. And it reads, Then Yah said, Let there be light. And light began to shine. Yah named the light day, and he named the darkness night. In Bereshit, Genesis, he put his calendar in order, the order that we should follow. Hallelujah. When Yah was giving me this information, and remember, I'm just sharing the information that he gave me. So when Yah was giving me this information, the part that I was getting confused about was in verse 5 of Bereshit. Genesis. When it says there was evening 
And then there was morning. This was the first day. The Hebrew word for morning is boker, which means sunrise, end of night, coming of day, and the beginning of day. You can find this in Strong's Concordance H1242. And we went over Yom Ikad, hallelujah, in verse 5 last week. Yom means day. And you can find that in Strong's Concordance, H3117. And Ikad means one. And you can find that in Strong's H2. Five, nine. What this really means, the evening and the morning was the first day. It really means a complete day, a 24-hour day. It does not mean the day ends at sunset. It does not mean that the day ends at midnight. The day started, and it always starts, at dawn, which is sun rise. This is the scriptural day from Bereshit, Genesis. And if you have a problem with anything that I am saying, feel free to talk to Yah about it. Hallelujah. Get his voice on the matter. Praise Yah. And then follow the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Let's look again. We looked at it last week. We're going to look at it again. Passover in Way E. Crawl, Leviticus 23, verse 5. And it reads Yah's Passover is on the 14th day of the first month, just before dark. And I think we all agree on that. The next day at sunrise is the festival of unleavened bread. Verse 6, Yah's festival of unleavened bread is on the 15th day of the same month. All right. Now, if the evening and the morning is the same day. Why are the dates different? Look at it. It's on your screen. The evening, Passover starts at the evening on the 14th. And if the next day was the evening and the morning being one day, then that date would be the 14th. But in the scriptures, it is the 15th day of the same month. Hallelujah. The date has changed. If it was the same day, it would say 14th and 14th. But it's saying 14th and 15th, showing that when the sun rise, it is unleavened bread. When the sun rises. Hallelujah. Let's look at atonement. For those who believe, like I did, I believe this, that the evening and the morning was the first day. Let's look at Way E. Crawl, Leviticus 23. We're going to look at verse 32. Then we're going to look at verses 26 through 27. Hallelujah. And this is talking about, again, the Day of Atonement. It starts in the evening on the ninth day in the evening and goes to the next morning which the scriptures calls that next day the 10th now if the evening and the morning are one day then why does it give two different dates if the ninth at evening goes into the next evening then The date should say the ninth and the ninth, but it says the ninth and the tenth. Hallelujah. Take 
a breath. Hallelujah. This is a lot of information to take in. Hallelujah. We're going to move on now. Yah gave Moses his calendar. And we're going to be reading from Shemot, Exodus 16, verses 4 through 28. It's quite a bit of reading. So just hang in there with me. Hallelujah. Then Yah said to Moses, Behold, I will cause bread, which is manna, to rain from the Shamaim for you. The people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day so that I may test them to determine whether or not they will walk obediently in my instructions, or I can say in my law. And it shall be that on the sixth day, they shall prepare to bring in twice as much as they gather daily so that they will not need to gather on the seventh day. And we know the seventh day is the seventh day Shabbat. I mean, verse six. So Moses and Aaron said to all Yashorel, at evening, you shall know that Yah has brought you out of the land of Mizraim, Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of Yah for he hears your murmuring against Yah. What are we that you murmur and rebel against us? Verse 8, Moses said, This will happen when Yah gives you meat to eat in the evening. Now, just remember that he's going to give the people, our ancestors, meet to eat in the evening. And in the morning, he's going to give enough bread to be fully satisfied because Yah has heard your murmuring against him. For what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Yah. Just going to take a side journey here. Anytime we murmur and complain about the instructions that Yah is giving us, Hallelujah. It's good to ask him. It's good to seek his face. It's good to hear his voice. It is excellent to always follow Yah. But if we're murmuring and complaining about this and that, we are murmuring and complaining against Yah. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of Yasharel, Approach Yah because he has heard your murmuring. Verse 10. So it happened that as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Yasharel, they looked towards the wilderness and behold, the glory and brilliance of Yah appeared in the cloud. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Then Yah spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the murmuring of Yasharel's speak to them saying, at twilight, And if you look up the word twilight, that means evening, you shall eat meat. And in the morning, you shall be be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am Yah, your Elohim. So in the evening, the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a blanket of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew evaporated on the surface of the wilderness, there was a fine flake-like thing, as fine as frost on the ground. Now, I want you to note that um, dew comes early in the morning. Hallelujah. Verse 15. When Yasharel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And and Moses said to them, This is the bread which Yah has given you to eat. This is what Yah has commanded. Let every man gather as much of it as he needs. Take an omer for each person according to the number of people 
each of you has in his tent. Verse 17. Yashorel did so, and some gathered much of it, and some only a little. When they measured it with an omer, he who had gathered a large amount had no excess, and he who had gathered little had no lack. So they all had the same amount that they needed. Hallelujah. Every man gathered according to his need, his family size. Hallelujah. Moses said, let none of it be left overnight until the next morning. Note, the evening overnight and the morning are two different days. Take a breath. Hallelujah. I understand. Hallelujah. This is a lot of information to understand. But seek the face of Yah. Hallelujah. That's what I did. It took me a long time to understand this. Verse 20. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left the supply of it until morning. And it bred worms and became foul and rotten. And Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it every morning. Make a note of this. Every morning is at sunrise. Hallelujah. Each as much as he needed. Because when the sun was hot, it melted. Now on the sixth day, and we know that the sixth day is our preparation day. For the Shabbat, on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each person. And all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, verse 23. He said to them, this is what Yah said, tomorrow. So Yah is saying tomorrow, and tomorrow is the seventh day. It's the next day. Hallelujah. It's the day that sun rises. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, the next day, is a solemn rest, a Kadesh Shabbat to Yah. Bake and boil what you will bake and boil today on the sixth day. Hallelujah. And all that remains left over, put aside for yourself to keep until morning, which morning is another day. So note that they gather twice as much bread on the sixth day and bread comes in the morning. If you go back and read the scriptures slowly, you will see that bread comes in the morning when sun rises. Hallelujah. Tomorrow is the next day. It is not the same day as the sixth day. The seventh day is tomorrow. Tomorrow is the Shabbat or the Sabbath. Hallelujah. That's what it's saying in this particular scripture. Moses called tomorrow morning, which is the next day. Take a breath. Hallelujah. Verse 24. They put it aside until morning as Moses told them. And it did not become foul, nor was it wormy. Then Moses said, eat that today. Now, it's the seventh day. Because they put, the, put it aside until morning. Now, Moses is saying, eat that today. It's the seventh day. For today is the Shabbat. And this was the morning. Hallelujah. Today is the Shabbat to Yah. Today you will not find it in the field. Verse 26. Six days you shall gather it. But on the seventh day, the Shabbat or the Sabbath, there will be none in the field. Now on the seventh day, this is the Shabbat. Some of the people went out together, but they found none. Note, on the Shabbat morning, they went out together, but there was no bread. Hallelujah. Let's look. 
hallelujah, at Bamidbar, Numbers 1132. This is when our ancestors were complaining. And it said, they went out and gathered quail all that day and all that night. And they gathered quail all the next day too. Note, look at the progression of the day and the night. They gathered quail all that day and all that night. A day and a night. It's a 24-hour day. The day always comes first. Hallelujah. Let's look at Joshua 5, verses 10 through 12. And it says, And the sons of Yasharel encamped, encamped in Gilgad, and celebrated the Passover on the 14th day of the month in the evening. I think we can all agree on that, that Passover is the 14th day of the month in the evening. In, in the plains of Jericho, verse 11. And they ate of the fruit of the land, unleavened cakes on the next day. So the next day after the Passover was unleavened bread. When the sun rise, it was unleavened bread. The 14th in the evening is Passover. The next day, when the sun is up, is unleavened bread. And parched new ears of grain in the same day. And the manna ceased on the next day. Manna comes in the morning. If you go back and read the scriptures, you will see that manna comes in the morning. Hallelujah. It may take you a couple of times to read this before you start understanding. Hallelujah. After they had begun to eat of the fruit of the land and the sons of Yasharel never had manna again, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Note, manna or bread comes in the morning. And I'm repeating myself so that this can get into your spirit. Hallelujah. The time clock is day and then night. The day begins with sunrise. Passover is the 14th in the evening. And the 15th when the sun rises is unleavened bread. Hallelujah. We're going to look at Jubilees chapter 6, verse 36. And we're going to read to uh, verse 38. And remember, Jubilees was written by Moses. Hallelujah. It was part of the Torah until the powers that be decided to take it out of the Torah. Hallelujah. You can research that and look it up for yourself. Hallelujah. Jubilee 6 verses 36 through 38 says, for there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the season and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. Verse 37, for this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony and the unclean day of feast day. And they will confound all the days, the Kodesh with the unclean and the unclean day with the Kodesh. For they will go wrong as to the months they will go wrong as to the Sabbath or the Shabbats. They will go wrong as to the feasts. And they will go wrong as to the years, to the year of Jubilee. Hallelujah. Verse 38. For this reason, I commanded and testified to you 
that you may testify to them. For after your death, whose death? Moses' death. Your children will disturb them. Will disturb what? The months, the Sabbath, the feast, and the Jubilee. Hallelujah. So that they will not make the year. And this is telling us how many days is in every year on Yah's calendar. So they will not make the year. 364 days only. So the year is not 30 days. I used to believe that the year was just 30 days um, every month. But it's, and that would that would give us a different uh, number. Hallelujah. But it's uh, 364 days only. It's not 365 like we have on our current calendar. And for this reason, for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new months, the seasons, and the Shabbats, or the Sabbath, and the festivals. And they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. Hallelujah. So we see that Jubilees chapter 6, verses 36 through 38 which was written by Moses, is telling us that Yah's calendar has 364 days every single year. Now, this breaks down to the first month being 30 days, and the second month being 30 days, and the third month is 31 days, and it goes on and on like that. Hallelujah. We will talk more about Yah's calendar next lesson. I'm just giving you bits here a little and there a little, just a little different bites every week so that you can uh, understand it. Hallelujah. It took me a, a good while to understand all of this. Hallelujah. But you seek the face of Yah. Hallelujah. You hear his voice and follow Yah. And we'll see you all in the next lesson. We hope to be with you on Wednesday. But if we're not with you on Wednesday, know that we will be with you the following Wednesday. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Hallelujah. And I need to be able to take care of all everything that's happening behind the scenes and everything that's happening in front of the scene. Hallelujah. So don't forget to ring the bell. Hallelujah. Ring the notification bell to know and to be informed when we upload. Hallelujah. Follow Yah's calendar. Shalom.